for the first anniversary of the woodpecker, I'm doing a special episode. Instead of showing you a woodwork project, I'm showing you how to make an episode of the woodpecker. I'm doing a special episode to mark the first anniversary of the woodpecker. I'm not doing a woodworking project, but I think you'll be interested in this one, because I'm going to show you all the steps it takes to produce an episode. I'll also toss in some advice. Each episode is produced like a documentary, or to be more precise, like a news item. I have a lot of experience in that area, because my actual day job is news editor for a TV station. This new type box. Each project starts with an idea, which I put on paper or draw an elaborate 3D plan on the computer. When I'm ready, I start to shoot every scene. In a TV station, they use this type of camera. It weighs 25 pounds. The images are recorded on a 90 minute Blu-ray cartridge. I use this Canon camera, which records on a tiny SD card. It's much smaller and way lighter. I use a video camera instead of a digital camera, because the sound is better and I can easily turn the viewer to see what I'm recording. I can also control it from a distance with a remote. But unfortunately, it doesn't have a wide-angle lens. I bought this camera because it was the only one which fits in my budget and add an audio input jack. The first episodes were recorded on this camera. I'm glad I bought another one, because a camera like this, which records in standard definitions, produces an interlaced picture, and on non-interlaced screen, fast-moving pictures look jagged. I have some issues when I record in my workshop. There are too many different light sources including some neon lights, which are about 4,000 Kelvin. Then, a tungsten lamp at about 3,000 Kelvin. There are also two windows and a door that allow daylight in, which can vary from 3.6 to 6.5 Kelvin. So, I make sure I do a white balance before filming every shot. Here's a demonstration to show you the difference. Here I'm doing my balance using the window order. Look at the white walls. Now I redo the balance using the wall. Look at the window border. Each light source changes the colors you see. I always want to show the true color of what I record. So I do a manual white balance before recording each new shot. If I put the camera on automatic white balance, the objects will not have the same color in a close-up as they do in a wide shot. I also do manual focus on every recording, so the focus won't change even if something happens, like my arm passing in front of the lens. I always record several angles of each step, so when I'm editing it, I have several choices to pick from. When the project is finished and recorded, I can start editing. I always begin with the pre-edit. Nowadays, with non-linear editing software, the work is much easier. I select the best shots and the ones that work well together. I never get attached to a shot. If it doesn't fit, I don't put it in. On really big projects, I throw away almost a third of my shots. The pre-edit can take up to several hours depending on the length of the episode. When I'm satisfied, I start to write a script. I write it in French, then I rewrite it internally in English. All my scripts are checked by Paul. He's our television show producer, and he lets all the reporters' stories. I then clamp the base just because you have a lot of dance, so I'm trying to okay. just... I wish he was more of a woodworker than a punk rock singer-guitarist. But it does make my scripts better. I record my voice in a quiet place and I always ask someone to listen while I'm recording it. You all the step 
it takes to produce. No, no, it's steps. There's a nest there. If I make a mistake, it's cut right away, and it's easier for editing. Though boring for my listener. Then the voice is cut, so I can remove the errors and pauses. Now that the voice track is cleaned up, I drop it on the top of the pre-edit. Then I trim the edit to fit the voice. Often at this stage, I remove more shots. The work is much easier. I also put in some sound ups. I leave a pause in the voice track to keep the natural sound of the recording. This way the narration is less boring and people can understand what I say more easily. Much easier. I select the best shots and the ones that work well together. Now that my episode is almost over, I add some background music. I always use some royalty free music. It's easy to find some on the internet. Now that the edit is complete, I just need to upload it to YouTube. Here's some advice. If you want a nice video, don't mess up the editing or the shooting. A good edit gives the rhythm to a piece and holds the viewer's interest. Look at this example. You may think that sending is really boring. But if you put in several angles, it looks like it's fun, fast, and efficient. Also, don't overdo the transition effects between shots. Use a cut, a dissolve, but keep your effects for special occasions. When the mood of the story allows it. Next time you watch your favorite TV show, pay attention, and you will see that they use cuts in between most exits. One of the effects that people like to use is a chroma key. Just be careful with that effect. If the green or blue background and the subject are badly lit, the key will tear. Same thing if you stand too close to the background and you make a shadow, or if the background color spills onto you. It's not an easy effect to master. You need a lot of lighting on your subject and on the background. The background should have a uniform color and you should stand at least six feet away. Believe me, the best effects are the ones nobody notices. Like the one for my episode, called the visit to the cottage. Look at the can of bleach in the water. I removed it with an effect. There are a lot of rules to follow to produce a nice video, from the recording, to the writing, to the editing. I just told you a couple. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you next time for a regular woodworking episode of The Woodpecker. Yeah.